Plamondon is um, my hometown and where I live now presently. It's a town that was founded by my great grandfather, the Père Joe, Joseph Plamond, and, and uh, he came from Michigan. And it sounds strange because people think, well, he should have came from Louisiana or something. But, um, or at least New Brunswick. I know, yeah, he, he should have came from uh, somewhere else. His, his grandfather, I guess, came from Quebec. But um, they moved to Michigan and uh, they found that all of a sudden they were losing their culture and their language and uh, they, were, they were getting to be Americans in a big melting pot and they really wanted to keep their, their culture and he wanted to have uh, children that spoke French and his sons were marrying uh, English girls, Anglophones, and so he said uh, he had a real, you know, cowboy spirit and uh, so he said he was going to move west. He had heard there was, there was land and there was lots of it. There was nobody there but Indians, that's what he had heard. So uh, he took off. They went, they went west and they went to uh, St. Boniface at the time and he found it was still too developed. And uh, Edmonton, St. Albert, Warrenville. And in St. Albert, somebody had told him that there was land that you could have. There was nobody there. There were just Indians and it was bush. And uh, you could just scoop it up for nothing. And um, so he, that's what he decided to do. And he got to this little place. There was nothing. It was a, like a little valley. And he said, wow, this is going to be our town, and we'll name it Plamond Donville.
uh, my grandfather's family, uh, he had um, 17 brothers and sisters, and uh, hard, cold winters there in the bush. <laughs> and uh, they were a very musical family, and uh, everybody played an instrument. My grandfather played violin, a real good violin player, and he used to, you know, keep the beat with his feet and stuff, you know, and play harmonica. And, uh, and every one of his kids played, and now all my cousins, including me, we have about six bands in the family. And uh, weekend, Sunday after Mass, a big dinner, and then we'd all play music. I guess I'm basically the only one out of my town and uh, out of the relatives that pursued it. Uh, everybody still does it on weekends for weddings and for money and uh, just for pleasure. Everybody does, but I'm the only one that ever pursued it. So I've been real lucky. Everybody really supports me. And uh, when I'm on TV, it's like uh, one uncle, my great uncle, actually, my, my grandpa's, uh, brother that's still alive. He's a big fan of mine. He's 87 and uh, he phones my uncle and says, Crystal's on TV. And then my uncle phones my dad and everybody phones. You know, <laughs> it's it's got Marcus and Telegraph. Yeah. Um, I've, I just write what comes from the heart. So sometimes a song will come uh, bilingually in English and French, sometimes just in French, sometimes just in English. And uh, usually I, I, can't, uh, I can't write in Cree. Usually I'll write in French or in English, but I know I want to sing it in Cree. So I'll, uh, I'll phone one of my friends, a native elder, who's, uh, who's helped me write and, and translate it for me, and I'll tell her, this is what I really want to say, but I have a feeling that it has to be sung in Cree. So that's, um, that's what I do. My daughter, um, G, she's very, she's 12 years old and she's very, she knows where she's going. It's like she has her style and, you know, I was really, I was timid, but um, on stage she's a little shyer, you know. I don't know if that's what she wants to do with her life, that's the thing. But she sings uh, harmony with me, she's got a great voice and it's, you know, mother-daughter harmony is very close, so it's really nice. I'd like to take her more, but she's got, like, she wants to be a classical violinist, she wants to go to university, so. My daughter, my son, he's more like me. He's crazy. He's um, he plays drums and stuff, and he's a real little uh, 
a show off on stage and he gets on stage he's nine he loves it um, his voice is a little less you know clear to my daughters but on, people love him you know he gets on stage and he's like you hi how are you doing you know <laughs> off the album Under a Stormy Sky and I used to do it in the show live and people used to come up to me who have never heard of Daniel Lanois and asked if I had written that and I'd say no and um, when I was in the studio recording somebody said why don't you record that song and I said well I wanted to record you know my own material and they said you know that's really a good song for you and uh, so I thought great so we wrote to him and, and he was really excited and he said yeah and he said, his manager said, well, if he would be here, he was in England at the time, he could do a duet with you. I mean, can you imagine that would have, you know, blown the whole album way out of the water more than it is now. But so uh, I did record it in the last April when I was in New Orleans. Uh, we got to meet him and it was like he it was like we knew each other forever. And he sang and uh, some cuts off the new album and listened to mine and. We, um, he asked why I wanted to record the song, and uh, we talked about how he had written it, and we both cried, and he's really, he's really a great guy, so my dream is for him to produce one of my albums. With my baby under a stormy sky, Papa, you want to let her let her love us. Don't say with my baby under a stormy sky, Jean Paul, you know, you're long, the bell accordion. Don't say with my baby under a stormy sky, but I hear. And I see the blue air fly over Sugar Hill, snow white, big blue siren in the night. 
come me, red bass, there we go, under a stormy sky. Louisiana is, is the song. Um, that song is so, it's, it's still special to me because um, that's the song we did the video of in, in uh, Louisiana, the song that enabled us to, to go there and do the video in the first place. And um, four years ago when I got the band started, I was singing what I'm doing now, but less, you know, less Cajun. I was doing more traditional French Canadian. And um, I met Hadley Castillo from um, Louisiana, and he said, um, I was opening for them in Vancouver, and he said, uh, Hey, Sha, you're a Cajun. And I said, No, I'm not. And he said, Oh, yeah, Sha, you are, and you don't even know it. They sent me the scrub board about two months later, and I started playing it, and I, I fell in love with it. And I'm a big fan of Zachary Shaw's. And so I just, uh, one night, I just sat down after I, was, after I had met them. I was really lonely for them. I felt this real, this kinship with them, and I was lonely, and I sat down on my piano, and I wrote it, and it was like, uh, um, sometimes I'm just guided to write stuff and it just came out it's a real simple song three chord song and uh, I talk about um, about the Acadians and the Cajuns they're good people and uh, how when you go to Louisiana you kind of forget your problems and uh, the two important the most important things in life are God and music and that's what the song is about Et pour se lève avant tout la nuit, il y en a qui viennent de l'Acadie. On va la faire de nouveau au rendez-vous en Louisiane. Oh, 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 oh,
C'est un petit monde qu'on dit tout le temps Même s'il est plein d'habitants Il y a juste deux choses qu'on a besoin La musique et le bon Dieu Si on se cache à l'heureux Nos amis de partout Au rendez-vous en Louisiane On va avoir père de femme Je vais aller voir mes vieux amis Cajun Métis is um, another song, I, another beat I had in my head going around for a long time, and uh, I just I had this feeling um, about Lou Riel, how strong of a man he was, and how really uh, hard it is sometimes for the, the Métis people because they lost their identity, and how they're so similar with the Cajuns and the Acadians. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I just write. I just I'm guided by something, and. Uh, you know, my pen just goes. And so it happens to be very spiritual. It talks about the, them being deported and how the native people, same way, how sometimes you're treated badly because of your skin color or, you know, just because somebody says, well, these are bad people, so they're bad, you know. And uh, sometimes how the colored people are treated in the South. So it's a real mixture of a song. And, and so it, it works out neat because the native people love it and the Cajun people and the colored people like it. So it's a, it's a kind of a neat song where it brings people together. Ah! 
Like I, I know that the music, the music business uh, in Canada is, is better in Toronto and Montreal, and uh, but I, uh, I really, I'm a country girl. I have to, I really have to be in the country, and so uh, I really like Alberta, and I'll probably make it always my home. But you know, uh, I have a lot of work in Louisiana too, so uh, I'd probably have to go there half a year, half the year, and I, and I wouldn't mind. I'd like to, you know, maybe leave the winters a little bit. <laughs> I'm from here, but I'm kind of tired of the long winters. Yeah. But uh, Alberta is my home. We want to hear from you. The Shaw Cable Response Line is now ready to hear from you. Your comments, your views, we want to know. So call us, 250-7772, Shaw Cable. This is Shaw Cable 10, your community channel. 